This is a chessboard. Here's our AI model from the last video, finding its outlining corners, but not its 3D position. The most popular computer vision algorithms are great at turning 2D points into 3D positions. I have points. This should be easy. It's broken. So, I didn't expect that. But, I think I find something interesting. This simple pattern breaks computer vision, but hidden in that failure is a geometric clue, one that leads to a new algorithm that's not just insanely fast, but turns our problem into a solution for more than just chessboards. Any system that interacts with the world needs to know one thing first. Where are things? That's pose estimation, the backbone of robotics, navigation, and more. Computer vision solves this with algorithms. They take key points from images or LiDAR and try to fit models to it. But real life makes that hard. Bad lighting, sensor noise, things blocking the view. That's where workhorse algorithms like Ransack and ICP shine. They cut through the chaos to find structure. But here's the paradox. This is a checkerboard. Perfect grid, clean corners. We literally use it to calibrate cameras. It should be the easiest target. But these powerful algorithms fail badly. We see symmetry everywhere. The symmetry that makes these beautiful patterns is also the curse. So why does it break? If we knew exactly which points of an object were visible and where in an image, we can use least squares maths to solve for its 3D position and rotation directly. But we have a set of unknown and known points, so which ones match up? The most popular computer vision algorithms like random sample consensus and iterative closest point don't solve the puzzle all at once. ICP throws out a guess, a random translation and rotation for example, then it finds the closest points between the guess and the actual points. If we sum these distances up, we get an error score. Every possible guess has an error score, which we can imagine as a lost surface. But the real surface has as many dimensions as we have variables. That's hard to understand intuitively. So we'll project down to a 2D surface instead. The XY positions on the surface are different transforms, and the height is the error score. Here, the right answer should have the lowest error. Guessing and refining is like rolling a ball down the hill. If you've heard of gradient descent in machine learning, this will seem familiar, though it's not exactly the same. Each ball is a new random initial guess, and each step is an iteration. The rolling ball is the model being pulled towards the closest points. Guess, score, refine, over and over, till we hit some good enough threshold or reached our max iterations. We have to remember to avoid infinite loops. For most shapes, this is enough. The search looks like a smooth valley with one clear bottom. Drop in anywhere and the ball rolls to the right answer. But for the chessboard, a nightmare landscape of false valleys as far as the eye can see. Its perfect symmetry creates thousands of potential transforms that allow the model to falsely score well. The classic algorithms will almost always get stuck in the wrong valley, convinced it has found the right answer. It's a trap set specifically for guess and refine algorithms. And the symmetry of the grid is the bait. The only way out? Keep guessing, over and over, forever, until one of those balls falls near enough to the right valley. And so that's what I did 10 years ago, which was slow, but it did work. I want to note here that there are many different ways to solve this problem. I go in depth about those approaches in another video if you're interested. Things like Hoff transforms, various ML architectures, each approach has its pros and cons, but they all struggle with achieving both speed and accuracy at the same time. It just feels incomplete. There must be something better. These false valleys point to a fundamental issue with the popular ransack based approaches. They're doing the best they can, but it's like they're blindfolded. So what makes a pattern a pattern? There's something not just about where the points are that defines a pattern, but how the points relate to each other that matters. This strongly suggests that the answer is not in the point locations, but in the relationships between the points. The main relationship between points is that they're offset from each other in pixel space. So let's calculate this displacement vector, the distance and direction from every single point to every other single point. Well, this creates a dense cloud of relationships that doesn't seem useful yet. But let's try moving all of the vectors to a common origin. Wow, that's quite pretty. Let's also plot only the endpoints of the vectors so we can see what's going on better. Wow, that's so interesting. 
The chaos has organized itself into a kaleidoscopic pattern where clusters of points signify common displacements of the grid. The symmetry is beautiful. It's revealing the grid's hidden structure. It's so cool. Look at how the structure changes as the chessboard moves and rotates around the image. Even with the missing points, or the false ones or the noise in the system, the structure stays remarkably stable. These clusters define the very concept of the grid in a way. And to a computer, the maths of finding clusters is a much, much easier problem. It seems so simple and obvious in hindsight, but I want to take a moment to share how it feels when a thought like this occurs to you. Before we have even found the solution, some part of you knows this will work. We still have to find that solution, but the feeling of the problem seems to change. Like the blindfold has been taken off, and we can finally see the puzzle pieces on the table. This is more than just a philosophical shift. It means the entire guess and refine strategy, the very foundation of those old tools, has to be thrown out. To answer this new question, we need a completely different kind of algorithm. One that sees the entire forest at once, not just individual trees. The key thing that defines the grid pattern is the two vectors defining its axes, the basis vectors. Interestingly, this shows up as the centroids of two very special clusters in our displacement space. If we can reliably find that, we can find the chessboard. Let's use a 2D histogram to bend the point clusters into a heat map. Now we can look for the strongest two peaks near the origin in this histogram. These should be the basis vectors of the grid, i.e. the chessboard we're looking for. But if we only did this, Noise and missing points might cause us to choose the wrong peaks. There's something else interesting about this displacement space though. These clusters seem to repeat radially outwards from the center, but the bad points don't have this repeating property. The random clutter creates random displacements. The true grid pattern has a unique fingerprint that noise can't replicate. They create strong repeating signals at integer multiples, which feels very similar to the harmonics of sound waves in music and Fourier space. Just like musical tones have a fundamental frequency plus its harmonic frequencies, the grid pattern has a fundamental pattern and harmonic multiples too. We can use this. Instead of just looking for the strongest cluster, let's rewrite our algorithm to look for the strongest harmonic. Let's score each harmonic directly, adding up the clusters along lines rotating about the origin. We should see the basis vectors as fundamental frequencies with harmonic peaks just like in music. By looking for this harmonic fingerprint, the correct answer lights up, and all the noise and uncertainty just fades away. The problem is solved. With these two basis vectors, it is straightforward to define the affine grid and fit it to the points. We now have a near-perfect mapping between our model and our points. A single homography fit gives us the perspective transform. No loops, no guessing. And look at that. With our new algorithm in place, we are now finding cluttered chessboards in scenes in real time. We no longer need to iterate and fail. Instead, we get a robust solution in one step. This algorithm is magnitudes faster to compute, running in thousands of a second instead of tenths. It's easily achieving our goal of running in real time, perhaps even a bit overkill, but I can live with that. By reframing the problem, the curse is now the gift. The very symmetry that confuses the old algorithms is what creates the powerful harmonic signal that makes a new algorithm robust. Not only that, we are now finding these patterns in the very situations where the ransack algorithms failed. It's so satisfying to find a solution that feels so geometrically rich and applies to any pattern. The right change in perspective reveals this simple, beautiful structure hidden within the pattern. A decade ago, I had made this arbitrary goal of a real-time, real-life, robust chessboard finder. I think we achieved that and created a powerful new algorithm along the way that works anywhere symmetry and patterns exist. If you followed along this far, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. I've enjoyed reading the nice comments from you all, especially those who've tried similar problems or the fun directions you've gone in this space. I've heard from a couple of viewers now that they'd love to see peace detection. I'm thinking about writing a small open source detector for people to use for their projects. So see you all in the next video.